My name is Clarence. I'm a final year seminarian at St. Francis Xavier Major Seminary. So a day in the life of a seminarian begins at 6.30 in the morning where we come together in the chapel to pray lots where we begin our first prayer of the day as a community. So that's the time where we recollect all our thoughts for the day and we offer that up to God. So 7 a.m. meditation is a time where we reflect upon the Word of God. So either through the Psalms that have touched us during the morning lots or prepare ourselves for the readings at Mass. And so there's a time where we converse with the Lord in a deeper and a more deliberate way through the Scriptures. Immediately after meditation is Mass. So that's the time where we enter into the highest form of worship at Mass, where we pray through and with Christ our Saviour, and hopefully the graces that come from us will enable us and will strengthen us for the day. So in community, everybody has their roles. There are those who are tasked with taking care of the chapel, so I'm one of the sacristans for this quarter. Basically, duties is to help us to exercise our responsibility and show care for the community, to show care for our material things that we have in the seminary. So it is now 8 a.m. and that's the time where we gather in the refectory for breakfast. So that's the time where people have their first fix of coffee or the second fix like me after we have really started off early in the morning and then that's the time where we break our silence and we chat and we prepare ourselves for the day through whatever meals that we prepare. Normally, certain days we have different kind of food that we serve for breakfast just to share a little bit more unique preferences for the brothers. Monday, we have cereal with milk. Tuesday, we have steam items. On Wednesday, we have either soft boy or hard boy eggs. Thursday is a mystery box. Friday, we have either tuna mayo or egg mayo. Saturday, we have Phoenix ham. Sunday is we join the parish or we just have it simply on our own. So after that, we have a bit of admin time, our own personal time to prepare ourselves for lessons and everything. And we begin our lessons at 9.15 a.m. So that would last from anywhere from two to four hours. So that's our lesson time and the time where we take in all the information and use that hopefully in the future in our pastoral ministry. The biggest significance actually about studying it's really helped me to understand church teaching in its depth. There is a difference between like learning it for my own sake and learning it for the sake of caring for other people, for the sake of being sure that you are being objective as much as you can as well. Monsieur Lau taught me when I first came in, in my initiation year, he was the Latin lecturer. It's not just purely studying the language of Latin, but he also sometimes shared in his life experiences Monsignor Lau is someone who I myself would admire a lot. As a lecturer, as a teacher, he continues to look after our well-being by making sure that we go through things slowly, we go through things with purpose, and we always enjoy his stories. Such a door, sacred doubt, you are sacred to the Lord. Do not forget the purity of the priesthood. It's a great gift of God, a privilege to you. A mere human being raised to so high a degree, they can offer sacrifice to God. Many of us can recognize his dedication, and for all of us, in fact, is a very great source of inspiration for us as priests to be faithful and to be dedicated in our ministry. So it is now 1.15, and most of us who have had lessons are actually a little bit tired, and yet we bring ourselves before the Lord as a break from the monotony of the studies that has gone on and to take stock of the day that has passed and also in a way for me at least to prepare our stomachs for lunch that will come 
immediately after midday, which is about 1.30. And lunch is served. Meal times. It's a nice time for us to bond together. During the rest of the meals, we are mixing with the seminarians, right? But for lunches, they are special because we are seated as a community. And that's a time when we share about matters pertaining to the seminary or work issues. Each of us have got different responsibilities in the diocese, so it's also a time when we share what's happening in the diocese. So it's a time of fellowship, which I find them very meaningful for us. These are all opportunities for us to bond with each other. And what I enjoy about it is having the opportunity to mix around with uh, the various brothers and fathers. Every week we have a rotation of sort, so we don't sit with the same brother at the same table all the time. We get to mix with each other. The bell being rung signals the end of lunch. And for some of us, who are eating the washing team. They will have to wash all the dishes and all the utensils that the cook has used and everyone has used. So dishwashing is really a reminder that no task is too small to be sanctified, that even the most senior seminarian also has to do the same thing as the younger seminarian in terms of washing dishes, in terms of cleaning the same area. So 2 p.m., that's where we have the option to do recreational and also to do siesta. Most of us will want to rest because we wake up very early in the morning and some of us will wake up even one hour earlier to do our own personal prayer. 3 p.m. signals the end of our siesta and that's the time where we begin to take up our studies once again to prepare ourselves either for the next day's classes or to kind of digest what has happened earlier in the morning where we had our classes and lessons. So uh, it is now 4 p.m. on Mondays we have choir practice. So, many people have quoted this saying from St. Augustine, he who sings praise twice, actually that's only half true. St. Augustine says, he who sings well, praise twice. So that's the main purpose of having choir practice, so that we can sing well in order to pray twice, to pray better for Mass. We all actually choose songs on what to practice for the community. So, usually choir practice is a time where everyone gets familiar with the uh, hymns that we'll be singing for the week. So through our practices, we'll be able to sing it properly. So I think it seems quite random, right, that we have just choir practice. More than that, to prepare us, right, as priests to be able in the future, I guess, to chant, right, and to lead the people in prayer. And as the priest, you have to lead the people in that, and it kind of elevates the mass. I think what I like most is really to see and to hear us coming together in song. Right. I must say that over the years, we have improved. I mean, I'm in my seven years, so we have seven years of choir practice. So I'm privileged to have a music background. I can read the notes and all that. But I know some brothers or most brothers don't have that opportunity. So I think they learn the technical know-hows and learning how to listen to each other. And I think that's quite beautiful, especially that it has effects in our liturgy and our worship. It is now 5 p.m. and we are walking towards Assumption English School to prepare for our community games. So many of us think that in seminary all we do is to pray and study, but uh, we also play. Right? It's important for us to have our recreation. So part of our program, we have recreation times during the day, but we also want to promote this community spirit. In the past, we used to play other games like Captain's Ball, but the problem with these games were that a lot of us started getting injured because of the contact, because of the speed and the intensity of the sport. 
So one of our brothers, he actually devised this game which is kind of like a mix of volleyball and tennis. So we allow the ball to bounce once before we return the ball, which takes off the impact. When I first heard the word bounce, I didn't know what game was it, you know. And then I realised it's a modified version of volleyball and it was quite interesting, like, you know. A group of like 20 guys, right, you would expect like rather rough games, right. In a way, I didn't expect the game to be so gentle in that sense. We have grown together as a group to win also. That's why also when you see that, you know, we celebrate together, I think it shows also that desire to celebrate for and with one another also. So 7 p.m. Vespers is for the other days from Tuesdays to Saturdays. So that's the normal time for Vespers. And that's kind of like the concluding of the whole day where we gather during Vespers to offer our thanks and praise to God. We recall what God has done for us throughout the day. And that's also a time where we start to recollect ourselves and prepare ourselves also for the subsequent activities in the night. It is now 7.30pm and we are going to have our third meal of the day in the refectory. It's dinner time. So that's the time once again where we gather to talk about whatever that's happened during the afternoon. So that's really a time where we come to talk. After dinner, for those who are not in the washing team, around 8pm or so, some brothers will go and take a walk, praying the rosary as small groups or they can take the time to play pool in our lounge and even board games. So for some others who want to express their deepening of their relationship in a different way, they go on one-to-one -one talks where they share a little bit more about what's been happening in their own faith journeys. And in a way, it's a time for them to build the bonds and to grow in their faith. 10 p.m. signals the time of grand silence. So Grand Silence is a time where we observe a period of silence all the way until we begin Lots the next day. So it allows us the time to take stock of the entire day to have the right disposition to hear the Lord speaking to us throughout the whole day that has occurred. What you have seen is a typical day in the life of a seminarian. This day is probably going to repeat itself for quite a number of years and it can seem very repetitive but really has a molding effect. The routine helps us to develop a deeper prayer life and the constant studies also to remind me that you know being a priest in the future is, is a constant effort to improve myself and these are the habits that are built up in seminary and also more importantly also the spending time with the same people day in and day out also helps to build fraternal bonds which are absolutely essential for the priesthood because being a priest is not being a lone ranger it is about being as being a priest in a community of other priests speaking of our communities of priests and those communities of seminarians that have come before me we are all formed in the same principles the same ideas the same hopes and desires and we find a very succinct summary in our seminary prayer that expresses very clearly these hopes and desires of each one of us which explain and really give a reason why we chose to enter the seminary, why we chose to become priests. God our Father, we praise and thank you for your love and the gift of vocation that has called us to be a seminarians and priests. It is with deep gratitude for this privilege of serving you in and through our vocation that we seek your grace for us. To grow in intimacy with you through prayer and contemplation, to be rooted in your holy word. To grow in holiness through frequent celebration of the Eucharist and reconciliation. To be docile to your Holy Spirit and obedient to those you have placed over us. To be men of upright character, in fidelity and responsibility. To build a loving community reflecting your life of the Holy Trinity, to be compassionate in relationship 
and ministry, to be on fire for Christ and His Kingdom, and to be zealous in the proclamation of the Gospel. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, our eternal High Priest, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen.